Hey, good morning, everybody. Welcome to the Developer Hangout for July 11th. We're going to be talking about the Retribution CID. I'm Will Hungerford. I'm a developer here at Privateer Press. That's Will Pagani. He's a developer here at Privateer Press. That's Oz Schoonover. He's a developer here at Privateer Press. It, it in, really makes sense. In <laughs> Legend of Zelda terms, courage, wisdom, and power. And this Triforce of Development is here to talk to you today about the Retribution CID that just went live. Mm. Oh, you're definitely wisdom and you're definitely power. All right. Uh, so before we get sure. into things, let's talk about what you're watching. So if you're watching us later on to YouTube, which you can catch all our videos at youtube.com slash privateerpressprime, we stream three times a week on Twitch at twitch.tv slash privateerpress. Um, on Tuesdays, we do the weekly rumble at 10 a.m. Pacific where we play the various games we make. And yesterday, we did our first ever Monpoc weekly rumble. Mm -hmm. Good news, everybody. For the next two weeks, we're going to do on Tuesday another Monpoc weekly rumble. Um, I think I'm in all of those because I have the only destroyer's army. Well, you are the so far. you are the lead developer on sure. Monpoc, so it sure. makes sense. But the uh, we're, we're going to rotate it as people get armies painted up and that kind of stuff. But I think for the foreseeable future, I'm playing a bunch. Yeah. For the, for the first three. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. So uh, Wednesdays is the developer hangout, which is what you're watching now. Also at 10 a.m. Pacific, and that's mm -hmm. where we get together. We typically talk about uh, CIDs that are happening, changes coming up in the game. Sometimes we talk about Pagani math, you know, whatever the topic might end up being. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and Thursdays... It's normal math. It's not Pagani math. <laughs> it's Pagani math. It's different from hunger math. Oh, it's However, way no, different than hunger math. math. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, and Thursdays is uh, one of my favorites, is uh, Get Your Paint On With Dallas, where Dallas is going to do uh, painting or hobbying on some, you know, typically a new model we've got coming out. And he also talks tips and tricks with everybody. Um, point being, we're streaming these all live on Twitch. So occasionally, while you're watching this, we're going to be looking kind of off to the side. Oz has the best reading face during these. That's because we have the, the live stream up right now, and we will occasionally call out someone's name, uh, read their question, and answer them, uh, especially during these CID talks. That mm -hmm. comes up a lot. Now, we're not going to be able to get to everyone, so if your question gets ignored, we're not necessarily ignoring you. That There's just a lot going on. So, uh, But feel free, talk to us, ask questions, and we'll get to it as we can. So, so first question... Legionnaires is asking about the live date, which is the dynamic update date of this CID. We try and aim those at a particular schedule and, and stay consistent, but convention travel, vacations, extra playtesting in-house, those kind of things adjust it. So imagine this dynamic update will happen on basically the same schedule as the other ones we've done after a CID closes, but it's never a guaranteed, like, always this many weeks or whatever. Speaking of schedules and conventions, uh, yeah. the week of Gen Con, which is August 4th through 6th, I believe, so. in that ballpark, uh, all of our streaming stuff uh, will be still at the studio, but we will be <laughs> yeah. at Gen Con. Unlike so, Lock and Load, where we took all of our equipment right. to Lock and Load, we're, we're not taking the equipment to Gen Con, but we're taking so, all of us. Right, Except so there won't be any live streams that week as far as the regular schedule. However, Dallas and a few others uh, had been mm -hmm. empowered to do uh, guerrilla streams while at Gen Con. So you'll still get some painting, you'll still get some hobby, you'll still get some dev talk. It just won't be along the normal schedule. Mm -hmm. Yep, and that all happens on the Facebook? Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Excellent. <laughs> all right, so let's get to it because there's a lot to cover. Yes. And uh, before we... It, it, before we get into the individual models, Pagani, why don't you give us a quick overview of what this CID is and how sure. it is unique in comparison to other CIDs we've seen in the sure. past. Mm -hmm. um, so this CID does not have very many new models in it. It actually has exactly one, which we're going to go over first. Uh, and then what this is, is um, we had a large break in our, our cycles and our, our production, mm -hmm. essentially, where all of our guys out in the back that normally make War Machine models are making Monpoc models. Uh, so what that did is it slowed down uh, sort of the rate at which CID was happening. So we kind of crammed a lot of them into the beginning of the year, which, yep. as you know, are not all out yet, but that's fine. Uh, we were going at a very, very fast pace at the beginning of the year, and that kind of got us super far ahead. So now we had this huge break. What we decided to do with that break, instead of not doing anything, uh, is to put Retribution in. Um, so the Dawn Guard Trident is the one new model in this uh, this thing, which we're going to go over the rules for here in a moment. Mm -hmm. uh, John is apparently giving me the thumbs up that the art for it is up there, because it is sweet looking. Uh, but the Dawn Guard Trident mm -hmm. is a uh, probably Bahi model. I'm just going to say it. Maybe you'll get in trouble for that. Who knows? Uh, <laughs> that will come out later in the year. We'll now, normally, um, <clears throat> we try and get all the models for a CID out within three months, right? Like, yeah. So because this one has been shifted from its original time into this time slot, 
Uh, that is not necessarily going to be true for this guy. So I would yeah. expect him to be a lot farther yeah. out than three months. I mean, not a lot, but maybe five months, maybe six months, something Just like that. The normal schedule does not apply. <laughs> Correct. Yeah. Like, end of the year is probably a pretty good guess for when this guy is coming. So keep that in mind when you are uh, setting your expectations for when the Dargard Trident is going to come out. Yep. Uh, and then also, because this is not tied to a specific theme force, we're kind of jumping around a lot. And that's something that we don't generally like doing uh, because yeah. it's harder for us to focus feedback. It's harder for us to focus on issues inside of each one of these things. Uh, so that's going to be one of the challenges for me personally in this is to make sure that I can keep it all straight and keep the feedback relevant to, for all of these different things and be able to report it all great. To, and to be honest, we've had CIDs not like exactly this, but when we did all the battle engines, when we did mm -hmm. the 12 factions of Christmas, mm -hmm. and to be honest with everybody watching, those were some of our most challenging CID cycles we've ever done. Because as Pagani said, when we do a more focused thing like Trencher's Exemplar, uh, when you, you narrow the focus, it's easier to get the more specific kind of feedback and data we're looking for. With these broader ones, there's just a yeah. lot a lot more information coming yeah. in, which means that the noise signal is, is turned up sometimes. And so, but we've learned a lot in the last CID cycles. And so I think that yes. we're, gonna, we're definitely going to get where we need to be on this. Uh, yeah. And I think it's also important to note uh, that this is not every model in Retribution. Nope. And it will never no. be every model in Retribution. No. Uh, and taking a look at every single model in a faction, even a smaller faction, is, is too much. would take a lot of time. Let's, we can be transparent about this. We, yeah. as the dev team, sat down and oh, several, yeah. several yeah, times yeah. Yeah, yeah. reviewed yeah. every single model in Retribution, uh, talked mm -hmm. about everything. What you see in the CID is what we have decided we want to be in the CID. So anything that's not in the CID, mm -hmm. we've already talked about and come yep. to the conclusion that it is currently operating as intended. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I'm not even sure that's entirely true. I think it's these were our, our priority targets, right? Sure. Yeah. Like, there are but some we things were, that we were like, were, well, we this were, could use a slight tap, but, but not enough to get it But change. not enough to get it into CID right now. Because yeah. like, like like, we had to pick and choose our battles, essentially. Yeah. So that's kind of what's going on with all this, just to set expectations here a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, cool. So let's jump uh, in. There's a couple of questions before we talk about the Trident cool. about CID as a mm -hmm. process. One I'm of them sure. that just came up was Ion and Holt. So please limit your discussions on the CID forums to the stuff in the CID PDF. Correct. On Facebook and anywhere else you want to talk about things, go crazy. And if you do see an interaction with a model that's not in the packet that is problematic or something like that, bring it up. But don't, please, don't harp on, I want this change with this model that's not in here. Because that is part of that signal to noise ratio thing that yes. just becomes a we, we can't pay attention to everything, especially people complaining about stuff that's not part of what we're trying to look at. Yes. Uh, just to hit a couple of the big ones from the community that we talked about a lot at Lock and Load in our de developer hangouts, uh, Ion and Holt will not be coming friendly faction for retribution. Not going to happen. Mm -hmm. um, we're not going to add a theme force benefit to any of the theme forces that let you take units and things from outside of that theme force inside of retribution. Mm -hmm. I think those are the big two. That yeah. just constantly got brought up. In a, the, a good example of that when we get to is like non vire jacks appearing in the Shiel theme force. Yes. Like just, yeah. So, but we'll, 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 get, to we'll get to that. that. that we'll get to that when it happens. That was interesting. Let, so, <laughs> yeah. so, the Trident. Yes. So, the Trident. Let, let me pull let, it out here. Let's jump into the one new model and then we'll start hitting all the legacy yes. stuff. Yes. So, the Trident's a battle engine. Uh, it's a Dawn Guard battle engine and it's pretty unique. Uh, John, if you could show the art again here. Uh, sort of what's going on with the Trident is it is a battle mage, I guess is what that lady behind it is. Something similar to like the cast that Assyria is. Mm -hmm. uh, and she uses her mind powers to essentially power this telekinetic tank. Uh, yeah, and, it's, it's and push it around magic, and float like it around. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Uh, so that's kind of what's going on with the Trident. And then of course it's manned by Dongard, which is what makes it a Dongard mm -hmm. uh, vehicle type model here. A battle engine, if you will. Um, <clears throat> so it has a Dongard tag there. It is a pretty offensive model, honestly. Mm -hmm. uh, it's speed seven, it's, it's got a great armor at 19, it's got 30 damage boxes. Uh, it has three Thresher cannons, yeah. which is pretty crazy. Uh, one yeah. in the left arc, one in the right arc, and then one that shoots in both. And they're boostable. And they're boostable with power tokens, which it gets uh, mm -hmm. identically to the uh, Storm Strider. It has the same roll build up power. Mm -hmm. yep. um, and those are range 12 D3 shots each, so up to nine shots at POW 13. And then it has... Um, Psycho Matrix is what it's called, which allows it to use two different abilities with those power tokens, which is Force Shield, uh, which gives, force gives it Force Barrier. Yeah. Uh, and, I mean, it's defense 12. Like, that's a solid defense stat for a battle engine. So, so Force 14. Barrier up to 14 is very, very sweet yeah. for a lot of these things. It means a lot of those guns have to boost to hit it. So now it's right. just way, way harder to deal with it. And range. the second ability is effectively Slipstream. Yes, uh, which you can use several times per turn. Uh, as we've noted in the, the rules form, we've already had that one pop up a couple times. Now, we've already noticed that there's kind of a... a 
rules discrepancy in the text here where uh, Psychomatrix will tell you how to spend the tokens and then uh, Telekinetic Wave or the Slipstream equivalent will also tell you how to use the tokens. Go with Telekinetic Wave using its wording and then we're going to clean up how Psychomatrix uh, so, talks yeah. about Specifically, how to use the Specifically for those of you watching, what uh, Psychomatrix says you can spend these power tokens at any time during its activation to use these abilities. For the Force Barrier one, that's fine. For the uh, the, slip, the telekinetic wave, it says after this uh, model finishes its normal movement. So one says any time, and one says only at this certain time. We're aware, and like Pagani said, we're yeah. going to clean that up. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then of course it has a, a reasonably powerful POW 16 uh, melee attack that also has uh, ram or momentum. Sorry. And it has dual attack. And it's got dual attack. Yeah. Okay. So it can charge and it can shoot and stuff. Yeah. Uh, definitely interested to see the, the first battle reports using this thing because it's one we're keeping an eye on. Like, it does a lot. It has a lot of offensive output. Yeah. And it can get it. I mean, a DEF-14 battle engine against ranged is is no joke, right? Like, well, yeah. it has the potential to put uh, nine PAL-13 shots into something yeah. with boosts with when boosts. you need them. Yeah. So, yeah, it, it's, it's, it's very offensive. I especially like this guy with Raven Ossian, Assyria. Those, those people that can really crank up range damage mm -hmm. uh, are just excellent. Yep. Excellent, excellent, excellent. That and I, I saw Nate when he was concepting this. The thing looks dope. It does look super yeah. sweet. Yeah. So that's our one new model coming out in the CID. We're excited to see a lot of testing. But let's go through what the, the vast majority of the CID is. Is uh, all the legacy models, some of which that have received small changes. We'll get to them as we go. And some have received pretty significant overhauls, like the, the first one we're going to talk yeah. about here. Yes. Uh, Gorshade 4. Yes. Uh, Gorshade 4 has received a, a, a pretty significant change. Um, and, for example, he has a brand new feat. Mm -hmm. uh, his feat does two things. Uh, first, it lets him collect souls. Or secondly, sorry, it's the second half of the feat. It lets him collect souls whenever a friendly uh, Retribution Warrior model dies in his control range, and then he converts those souls to focus on his following turn. And then uh, the first half is whenever uh, somebody without immunity cold destroys one of your models with uh, a melee attack. As soon as they resolve that attack, they become stationary. Um, so this is one part of his package, is the complete new feat. Mm -hmm. uh, let's talk about, he has an almost completely new spell list here. Almost. He, he lost yeah. Backlash, Frostfield, Hexblast, and Mage Sight. Mm -hmm. uh, he picked out Dauntless Resolve and Freezing Mist, which Freezing Mist is the newer spell we first saw on... Um, the uh, one. Yeah. And then on the neutral casters. And Cold as well. Thank yeah. you. Cold Grimma. Couldn't remember her name for some reason. So we've seen that spell. We know how effective it is. Dauntless Resolve, great, uh, great uh, buff spell. Two brand new spells, though. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, Hand of Ice and Light of Wrath, uh, which Hand of Ice uh, gives a model slash unit negative two armor unless they have immunity cold, and it's an upkeep, uh, which mm -hmm. in Retribution, an armor debuff like that can be incredibly powerful just given the way that this faction functions. Mm -hmm. uh, and then the other spell, Light of Wrath, uh, models hit by it lose stealth and suffer minus two defense. It's a AoE four flare, effectively. I mean, it is flare, uh, but... It isn't flare, like it isn't the actual Correct. rule flare. Yeah. So, yeah. if any time you had flare in some capacity, uh, it does stack, which yep. is interesting. Probably won't come up a lot. Uh, what, do you, what are your all thoughts on the the new Gorshade Four? Uh, I really like how this ties him back into his Crixian roots, right? Like we got some yeah. nice debuffs in there. Uh, was one of our main goals, uh, of course, making the feat a much more enticing feat was in there as well. Uh, I think yeah. it really also ties his character together as this sort of. Uh, Ice-themed, redemption-themed caster, right? Yes. Yeah. So uh, you get a lot of the themes from his Crix versions with Velas and stuff, uh, and then of course you get his storyline bring, uh, being brought back to life, being brought back into the Retribution, all sort of encapsulated in these rules, mm -hmm. which I really, really, really like. Um, so let's talk about Revive really fast. Uh, we've heard a lot of feedback about Revive and how some it, it is a polarizing ability on him. Mm -hmm. Some people like it, some people hate it. His new feat is going to help Revive be more meaningful. If a lot of uh, characters die, he gets a lot of souls, he gets a lot of focus, he can have a big Revive turn. Mm -hmm. um, so that feat, we definitely made sure Revive had its place. Um, but secondly, Revive is core to his concept. Uh, him being Correct. able to bring people back to yeah. life uh, is absolutely core to the theme and narrative of what of who Gore Shade 4 has become. So we... I never want to say never, but there's a very, very minuscule chance we would ever remove Revive. Instead, we want to do things like we did with the feet to make Revive more useful and have better synergy yeah, within correct. the caster themselves. And, and if Revive ever was removed, it would be replaced with something very similar. Yeah. So. And uh, we had a question from Dragon Pup <clears throat> on, the, on the chat okay. uh, asking about the intention of this feat working on enemy war casters and warlocks. Sure. Right now, it does. <laughs> Yep. It doesn't say anywhere sure, in there. Sure, it's broken. Non warcaster, non non warlock model. Yep. Test that. That's uh, one of those things that 
especially if you see that as a potential problem, then play games with it and see how it works. Uh, Grinaldi on Twitch says, how do you see him when he goes versus Kador, Trollblood, or some other cold immune list? Uh, that just happens sometimes. Sorry, you know. Uh, yeah. Sometimes you're playing Fiora 3 and you face somebody who's got a lot ton of immunity fire. Sometimes you're playing a ranged list with no answer to stealth and you fight somebody who's got Shadow Mancy. Yep. Um, yep. There Sh are... Shadow Fancy. Sh Shadow like Fancy. <laughs> there are... There is counterplay in the game and sometimes there is hard counterplay in the game. <laughs> yeah. uh, I think Gorshade 4 still has a lot of really cool things he does even if he isn't operating at max capacity. If you saw somebody who was bringing out nothing but immunity cold, you probably don't want to drop Gorshade 4 into him. But even if you did, if you had to, he still has, he sort of has a, another way he can play. If he went pure infantry, kill them all, revive them back, and play a more attrition-y game, yep. like, that's an opportunity. If you just ima imagine the other parts of him didn't exist, he wouldn't be as powerful, but you can still put him on the table and throw him down. So how do we think we'll play into those? Uh, less than optimal, but still fun? Sure. Yeah, it's a challenge, yeah. but... <clears throat> Shall we move on? <laughs> Let's move on Excuse to me. my favorite retribution caster. Go on. And it's there's only two casters in correct. this. Correct. Correct. Generally speaking, we keep our caster limit to two. Yeah, and we also try to not overhaul casters if possible. Yes. Gorshade, just like Cray and a few other ones, we, we looked at what they were doing, what their theme was, and some of those <laughs> interactions they had inside of their package, and we changed some things about them. Um, uh, but often it's like one spell changes or a couple of Warjack points change or a, a feet tweak or something mm -hmm. like that. Let's talk about Andy Podell's favorite. Andy Podell's the guy that has the world record for the, the, the best Mage Hunter win in hardcore ever. <laughs> having uh, won, was it, he went eight, no, seven rounds where the only model he ever killed was just the opponent's caster. He has like a perfect uh, Mage Hunter score in old hardcore and it was with Raven every single Excellent. time. So mm -hmm. Andy Podell, this one's for you. <laughs> Uh, yes, so uh, Raven is going down in Warjack points to 29. She was 30, mm -hmm. I believe. Uh, sorry. <laughs> we'll get to why. Uh, she's going to gain Sprint, which is one of my favorite rules of all time, if you know me. I'm a big circle guy. I love Warful Stalkers. I love Casters mm -hmm. with Sprint. It's amazing. <laughs> um, her melee weapon is going to gain Weapon Master. Which is huge. Which is fantastic. Mm -hmm. It really lets her get in there and do work. And helps uh, you trigger sprint. And actually trigger the sprint. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, and, and it's part of the it, one it kind of changes, Yeah, it kind of replaces Vortex, Vortex of Destruction, Destruction, which is being removed from her card, as well as Eliminator, mm -hmm. uh, which is mm -hmm. kind of what those two rules to me yep. uh, embody is like what Eliminator was trying to do and what Vortex of Destruction was trying to do. Uh, yeah. Now, it, that's not entirely true because those spells did do a little bit more than, than that. Sure. Uh, but that's sort of the idea behind these two changes, or swapping those two rules in for those two spells. Um, and then she's going to gain countermeasures, which to me is a very Mage Hunter thing, a very uh, Raven thing, right? It allows her to control her opponent, it allows her to kind of plan and do that kind of thing, which is very Raven to me. Uh, and then open fire. And open fire is to me like one of the best uses of her feet and mm -hmm. snipe and all those kind of things. And I think it's mm -hmm. something uh, that really lets her do things on a turn to turn basis, which is something that this caster is not really known for. Let's also just mention that open so. fire and retribution with the, some of the guns they have, especially oh, yeah. on their Colossals, like on the Hyperion or, yep. or Hypnos, can be. <laughs> Yeah. Very, very Ter powerful. The, me personally, and I know the dev team, we all look at different things, we all watch different things. Me personally, for Raven, I'm going to be looking at what people are doing with Open Fire and the Colossals very, very carefully, especially in her feet turn. Like, there's a lot of damage she can pump out. Like, mm -hmm. I, I know we want to see her be able to run up there with Weapon Master, kill things, sprint away, and be this highly mobile active caster, but I'm, I'm keeping mm -hmm. a close eye on the, does she become an Open Fire buff bot in the back because we sure. find out that that turns out to be too efficient. So sure. definitely keep an eye on that. Yeah. I, I mean, that is what she currently basically plays as. Yeah. So hopefully and we can get her up there and doing something a little bit more and more. Right. And that was the point of what I was saying is like we want her to be more active. We want her to be. Uh, she's you know you know one of the most badass like mage hunter style <coughs> war caster. She's supposed to be up there yep. in the mix tearing stuff up. Yep. Uh, okay, let's go over some war jacks real quick. We have a lot of changes to war jacks that are not particularly major, uh, mm -hmm. but I do want to touch sort of on each one of these here and yep. talk about what I want to see out of it personally and where we want it to go. Uh, so the demon. Yeah, Damon. I don't know how Be we before, pronounce it. Before you start real fast. Sure. You've seen us do this before. When we did uh, one of the most recent Kator CIDs, you saw us do this this large change to a lot of the, the Kator jacks uh, during, I believe it was Primal Terrors, is when we did all the, the Legion heavies mm -hmm. as well. And you saw a lot of mm -hmm. small point changes, a lot yep. of little adjustments. Yep. Um, and so when you see all these changes, that's that's what's happening now. And Pagani's going to go through the reasons for each. Uh, is we did, again, that holistic view of the entire sort of Warjack uh, roster and, and seeing where they were in comparison within their own faction and, and what we thought was maybe a little over-costed, under-costed, or they just weren't yeah. operating as they needed to. Yes. Uh, so the demon. Damon. I don't know. Whatever. Uh, Doug Damon. Doug Damon. I don't know how to pronounce it. Uh, 
Uh, it's going down to cost 14. Now, this guy's mm -hmm. got a really sweet gun. So that's kind of what, uh, personally, I like highlighting on this model. Mm -hmm. I don't think his melee is particularly important. I think uh, most of the time that he's going to be included in a list is going to be for that range attack. Yeah. Uh, yeah, we so saw him being let's focus on that. Right? Yeah, let's focus on that. Yeah. Uh, I think he was just too many points. Yeah. And bringing him down a little bit, I think his power level's great. Yep. Bringing him down a couple points might, uh, might help that out. So okay. see if he's making it into your list, see what he can do for you, see what he's answering, that kind of stuff. And, and the main thing, like the Banshee was, was overshadowing sure. him. Like when sure. you looked at the point efficiency of the two, like that's the main comparison we were making. One of the main comparisons we were making there mm -hmm. when we looked at him. Mm -hmm. Uh, the Gorgon is a great little support light, uh, but he wasn't finding a home. So dropping a point, shaving a point off there, can hopefully do something, get him into mm -hmm. some lists. Uh, yeah, he's, he's got the combo strike and stuff. So yeah, give that guy a try. He's dropping one point. Uh, Hyperion. This is the one that surprised a lot of people. Yes, so we did not change the points on Hyperion. Uh, there was a lot of back and forth on that because we are doing a lot with con Colossals and yeah. Variantuans at the moment. Uh, yeah. To try to make them a little more enticing, a little more powerful, essentially, because we've noticed that they aren't seeing too much play for a lot of them. Mm -hmm. uh, Hyperion at range 12 on a POW 18 gun is real good. <laughs> real, mm -hmm. real good. Uh, so we are wary about changing his points from the onset for the CID. Mm -hmm. Obviously, as this goes on, we'll see where we end up. Uh, um, real fast in Twitch chat. <laughs> so uh, Moscato84 says, the Gorgon still seems lacking. So uh, CID.PrivateerPress.com is where you can go sign up to see all the rules we're talking yep. about. But more importantly, you can participate in the CID cycle. Uh, come play games, post your battle reports, then, then answer your questions on the type form, send us your data. So if you feel the Gorgon is, is still lacking, play a game, demonstrate, you know, show us your results, and then give us your, your sort of statement, yeah. your, your argument, um, why. Mm -hmm. What was lacking, what didn't work right, you know, and even if you play a game where everything went perfectly or everything went bad, because let's say dice rolls happen, you can still make observations. It's, it's, it's almost very yeah. scientific in the way you do it. So yeah, yeah. If, you, yeah, yeah. if you're looking at this and you're like, oh man, I'm still not gonna take a Gorgon. Well, here's a chance. Come Tell let us know. why you're not gonna yeah. take but, that Gorgon. But don't just show up in the theory and list building and list all the things that have been. Yeah. Play a game with the changes and let us know what is and what you would like to see change going forward. Yeah, and be careful of wanting super optimization because I have conversations at cons and stuff where I'm, and, there, and people I've heard from say, well, I don't like this guy because he doesn't do everything. Well, that, that if every model did everything, then your army wouldn't have hardly any models in it. Luckily, that's so, a minority of, yes, of reports. But, what, when, when you think the Gorgon's lacking, if you do, or you think it's super powerful, figure out if it's doing its job and if it's in the right place in the faction. Sure. And when you look at the Hyperion and like the Starburst goes up to range 12, if you, your immediate response to that is, oh God, like it's going to blow up the world, if that's what you feel, yeah. jump in, yeah. play some games, try and exploit it. Use some of the other changes and show us like the, what, what is the worst you can do with the Hyperion. Uh, and you know, some things will catch our attention real fast if you're like, hey, I figured out a top of one kill with a Hyperion because you did this. <laughs> Yeah. Let us know. Yeah. You know, we test as much as we can, but there's a ton of models, a ton of interactions, and so... And CID exists so that we can have more tests. Stuff slips through Correct. the net sometimes. Yes, yeah. it does. Great. Right. Okay. Hypnos, he dropped a point. Um, Hypnos does cool stuff. Mm -hmm. Just a little too expensive. Shave a point off there. Yep. Uh, Imperatus, same kind of idea. Uh, dropped down to 20 points. I think he was 22 before. He was 22 yeah. before. Uh, and Imperatus got added to Legions of Dawn. He did. As just a flat, you could take him with anybody now. He did. Which yep. is awesome. Uh, he also jumped up to Mat 8. Uh, yep. Because of our next change, well, it's not our next one, but we'll get there. The Phoenix is going to go up to Mat 7. So, yeah. John is over here throwing a party for Imperatus and Legions of Dawn because he's a red player. Uh, Moros mm -hmm. picked up a speed 7, gained parry, gained 1 inch melee range, and was also added to Shadows of Retribution. Yep. Uh, yep. So this is the little guy that I'm really interested in because I think he's super cool, personally. Uh, and I want to see him in some lists. So get out there, test him, see what's up. Also had the coolest conversion I've ever seen. One of the coolest conversions I've ever seen. Okay. I forgot what somebody did, but they basically made half of him clear. So that like he looked like he was fading away, sure. like he was becoming invisible. This, this sounds then, like a Tyson thing. And then the rest of him was normal, like fully painted, beautifully like edge highlighted, and just looked great and had like a cool like lighting effects. And then it just looked like he faded away into nothingness. And I forgot who did it. If you're the person that did the fading away, Mor uh, Moros, good job. That model's great. Uh, so DKid32 in chat asks, uh, could the Vire Heavy Jacks all go to Rat Six like the lights are? That is the kind of question that we don't really like in CID because it has no backing. Uh, why do you want the racks to go to Rat 6? Obviously, your answer could I mean, be because Rat, Rat 6 is better. Rat 6 is better. Which is fine. Yeah. Uh, we're all aware that when you increase stats, yeah. models become better. That's not really a reason to want that. Um, 
So show that they're not performing in their uh, preferred role, show that they're not doing what they're supposed to be doing, and show how RAT6 is the correct change for that model. Mm -hmm. And then I think that is how you can start an argument or start a discussion about something like that, not just, hey, what about this? So, I, do, I do that all the time in the office. Uh, I just like wheel my chair over to Oz. I'm like, hey, buddy. Uh, and then you this? and you click elbows with me. That's yep. weird. It's really creepy when That's you it. come up behind me and do it. <clears throat> yep. Yeah, you put your elbows on my shoulders. It's great. Did you uh, talk to the Phoenix already? Not yet. No. Nope. Well, Last I mean, kind of a little bit. So it's going to drop 17 points. Matt seven. Mm -hmm. Yep. All right. Here's one I'm very excited to talk about. So that's all the Ooh, jacks. This one's spicy. Yep. This Don might be my favorite de change. De Desters. Oh, Desters. So. Oh, Desters. Um, we've been looking at Desters. We know that Desters. I mean, they're, they're amazing looking models. They were not quite performing where they needed to be. They've been a topic of contention within the community for quite some time. People have wanted Desters to be awesome, and we've been reviewing and reviewing. And we had this big, long dev conversation, and we think we have finally got there on them. First step, Lance is not going away. Lance is never, never going away. They, they will have Lance. Yep. So Now, there, we did have a discussion in one of our Hangouts at Lock and Load about the possibility of someday changing some aspects of Lance. But the rule itself. But the Lance rule, at its core, the, the narrative thematic concept of the Lance rule yeah. is never going to go away. Yeah. We but, may adjust it. We may adjust it soon. We may adjust it later. We can tweak things like that, but we're not going to just dump the Lance rule. But here's what they do now. So first off, they have dual attacks. So they can make melee and range attacks mm -hmm. in the same turn, which is great. But their Lance basically picked up the ability that if they hit somebody, they can then shoot and automatically hit them with their gun. And we mm -hmm. up the pow on the gun to 14, if I'm not mistaken. Yep. So now they charge in, they make their impact attacks, they hit their charge target, and then they follow it with a free pow 14. It's like a reverse assault that auto hits, effectively. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, and their, their output is... Well, their output is also improved by dual attack because yes. if they kill their charge target... They can still shoot. They can shoot something farther in, like yeah, a mechanic they, or something. Yeah, and they don't auto-hit that target. Yeah, but they, but they can So still now shoot they, they have a guaranteed either like a reverse assault where I shoot the guy I just hit for free, or a uh, like quick work effectively. I charge people in, I kill the guy, and then I still get to shoot somewhere else. Mm -hmm. And their Matt and Rat is, is very respectable. 7-6, so, I believe. Yeah, 7-6. And so for a 12-20 heavy cav unit, they need to be elite. Mm -hmm. We want them to, when they, when they charge the opponent, both of you should feel it. It should be devastating. Yep. And right now, with the volume of attacks they can put out between the impact attacks, the charge, and then the shot, they're basically guaranteed to get if they charge, mm -hmm. no matter what. Yeah. You're looking at a high volume of good accuracy, high power attacks coming out of this unit. So we think we've got there on them. <laughs> I think so, too. Uh, we've all played with them, and they are... They are I mean, they honestly might be too good. <laughs> and uh, they, they really They're make sweet. playing squishy support backline stuff scary. I mean, it doesn't even have to be that squishy, right? Like, pow 14s, you could sure, just kill a redeemer. Sure, but if you, if you, put, <laughs> if you, put a, if you have a couple of you know, mechanics or a couple of support solos behind a line, and you could normally see them because they're screened by same size base models, mm -hmm. the Desters are going to get to those guys. Sure. Yep. Yeah. So, uh, test out the Desters. Uh, we are very happy with where they are. Let us know if we went too far or mm -hmm. if you still think we haven't gone far enough. But I will be very interested in hearing the yeah. battle reports where people are like, nah, they're still weak. But we might have pushed the envelope. Sure. Yes. So, yes. Because sure. sometimes we dial things up a little too high and we readjust. Maybe we look at the points, maybe we take an ability down, maybe we you know, tweak a different stat. But that's what you guys are here for, to tell us, yep. did we go too far, or did we not go far enough, or is everything... First thing, I'm, I'm all about these guys right now. I yes. know they're amazing models that I've yes. always loved, so whatever. I'm in. I'm in. And then in Victor's, got yep. a point. <laughs> they're dropping a point, and then their officer's picking up reposition. Mm -hmm. uh, Which is great on that one. One of the things that concerns yep. me about this is now they're kind of similar to Desters. Because <laughs> they have that reposition, here, yeah. and they have those high pow guns. Yeah. Uh, they're a little different because they're not as fast. There's 10 of them instead of 5. Definitely like, don't hit as hard in melee or as accurately. Sure, sure. But yeah. I, I think there's, there's some similarities there, and that's something that concerns me. Yep. Uh, so keep an well, eye on that. We'll is it, it too similar? Are Desters just overshadowing them in every way? Are they, are they overshadowing Desters in every way? <laughs> like, that's kind of the... the the thing that I'm looking at here. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Uh, Sentinels, similarly, got a point change. Yep. yep. Uh, this was just is part of uh, the holistic review of all the infantry that we were changing and, yep. and looking in comparison. Also looking at other factions and similar infantry, we decided, small tweak. Nothing much to talk about with these guys. We just realized they were a little overcosted for what they were doing, so mm -hmm. we just tweaked the dial down a bit. Yep. 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 
Uh, Battle Mages, this one's a big one. Battle Mages um, has got a bunch of changes. A bunch of changes, and actually our document here is wrong. Oh, <laughs> what'd, you, what, what'd you do? Uh, they're cost eight. Oh. Not nine. Oh. Our document says they're cost nine, no, we but that is not the case. Well, they were nine at a point, we dropped them down um, eight. Yep. Yes, so House Shale Battle Mages are undergoing uh, probably the, well, Gore Shades here, but probably the biggest change that is a non-Warcaster uh, mm -hmm. in this, because we're kind of changing their role. Uh, I'm not entirely certain what their role was before, which was sort of this midline skirmishy kind of yeah. ranged unit. Yeah. Uh, I guess, which now I think it is sort of this get in the front, uh, don't jam because you want to get charged, mm -hmm. but get in front of your models, uh, kind of be that hindrance, get in the way, that kind of stuff. Uh, they're def 13 base, yep. uh, which is not a change, uh, which is a great defense stat. Uh, they're picking up set defense, which is going to put them at 15 against charges, which is a phenomenal defense stat. Uh, but they are losing force barrier, mm -hmm. and and we've this was one of our spoilers that we gave out a while back. Mm -hmm. Yep. There's been a lot of contention over this uh, in the community, so make sure that you test it out. You let us know what you think is happening in this, how you think it's going, that kind of stuff, uh, because I don't think we're 1,000% set on this either. Like we could. Yeah. No change things additionally on these models. Real fast while we're just having the set defense force barrier conversation, <coughs> part of this, it, 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 this one's hard to look at in just a vacuum because force barrier Correct. did get moved to yes. the artificer. So while they don't have it naturally, they still have access to it. So when you're testing them, definitely don't be like, well, they have no way of getting force barrier at all. That's not, that's not true. We definitely made sure somebody in the faction kept it to still be able to give it to them that works within the theme force that you'll be taking them with. Mm -hmm. In fact, the theme force that you'll be getting units of them for free. So. They're, they're, yeah. They require yes. a, a broader view of all the changes that occurred, uh, and we'll get to those as we hit them. And uh, part of this readdressing them was their role in that theme force. Yes. Because that theme force doesn't have an infantry unit that can Correct. screen colossals and those kind of things. They're literally the rank and file of the yeah. Shail theme force. So we yep. wanted to make them a little bit less individually powerful so that you could have more of them on the table to really fill out that theme force if that's how you want to play that theme They force. are Shail Winter Guard. I don't know if I'd go that They're far. a little bit better trained. <laughs> a little different. Hey, man. Uh, also, some people are asking in chat, yes, uh, Shale Battle Mages are going to FA Unlimited. That was a mistake in the PDF that I missed where I didn't turn the little U green. Uh, yeah. My bad. There's a lot of changes. I missed Shale one. Winter Guard. Uh, but yes, they are FAU. That is intentional. Uh, mm -hmm. Here we go. <laughs> well, they're FAU <laughs> in the CID. Uh, for now, yes. Let us we'll, know. We'll see what happens. Uh, but, yeah. By the way, everyone, if you go out and buy 20 boxes of, of battle mages, <laughs> one, thank you. We had two, this may not stick. Yes. Like FAU yes. may not be the real deal, the, so one of the like Cheers. fine print things at the bottom of, of the you know CID is always don't make purchases based on CID. Never. Yes, always wait for the final things to come out because uh, what what we've always strived to not do is invalidate models or them yeah. and these are very not final rules. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, don't don't think the faction you play that all of a sudden you're like, oh, I don't have a good drop into ret because of these changes. They're overpowered. Well, they're probably not going to end overpowered, yeah, right? Hopefully like, not. Never yeah. never let your actual play experience and your purchase experience be influenced by CID. This is yeah. literally <clears throat> test server. Yeah. So. That's what the dynamic update is for. That happens later. Yep. Yes. Then you can make purchasing choices. Shall, yep. we, shall we carry on? Yes. So Mage Hunter Infiltrators are our next one. Uh, they are picking up Combo Strike, which is super good. Mm -hmm. It gives a lot of hitting power to the, uh, the uh, Shadows of Retribution theme force, which is something that that theme force really lacks. Uh, like I, I was very surprised with just how a simple change like that made them such a powerful unit that yep. we actually played them at their original point cost of 13 points for the 10-man unit. And like triple infiltrators was just crushing everybody in play tests. So we ended up bumping them up to I think it's nine fifteen. Yeah, uh, yeah, for that kind of thing there because they're just real good. <laughs> like they're really quick. They can advance to play with Eris. They do a lot of damage. Like I, I think they're just a phenomenal unit right now. So just for a little levity, real fast. Brandon mm -hmm. Andrews said in the chat, "Please add Lance the Precursor Knights." No. But congrats on your win with Connie B at the recent Masters. By the way, Brandon, good she, job. She could have a Lance. Yeah, she's got a Lance. Yeah, Constance Blaze taking her all the way. Congrats to Brandon Andrews Absolutely. on a rocking it with Constance Blaze. Back to your originally we scheduled all, we, CID. We also had a, a good comment in there that uh, David didn't see the rest of your name. He's going to buy the Trident because it looks good, regardless of like how great its rules are. Well, hopefully we can hit both. And, stuff. and that's generally the most rewarding reason to buy a model. It's because <laughs> you like it, and you want to paint sure. it, and you want to play with it. Sure. Then you can think about, like, 
how perfect is this in this list and how's all the, like buying models because you like them and you want to paint them is is always safe. Correct. You never will dis be yes. disappointed if you like a model visually and you like painting it. Mm -hmm. That you, the, you, the, that purchase is always worth it. Yep, I agree. That's just some philosophy yeah, I buy there. Way wisdom. Just, just I buy way too many models. Courage, wisdom, paint. power. Sure. Wisdom. So, uh, <laughs> Strike Force Commander. Yep. Little Hunter, tweak. Strike Force Commander. Yep. Uh, speaking of arcane ammunition, as a granted ability, um, which gives his unit magic weapons. Which is awesome. That's yep. something that's. Uh, Kind of missing from that theme force, which is the Shadows of the Retribution theme force, is yep. there's not a whole lot of magic weapons there besides the Warjacks and stuff. Uh, and we felt it was a great thematic place to add it. It also let them, the uh, the Strike Force do a whole lot of things like get around Wind Wall, uh, shoot mm -hmm. Passage Jacks. Like there's just a lot of utility that comes from that. I, I actually think this is a bigger change than it looks like on oh, paper. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Like I think a lot of people will see this and kind of like as you're reading through all these massive changes in like Gorshade 4 and the Battle Mages, and you'll be like, okay, cool, they picked up magic guns. N n just stop. Like that's. <laughs> I that's think a big it's deal. far yeah. more significant yeah, yeah. within Retribution, the faction, than you may initially notice. So, like, definitely put some games in and, and, and see how much has changed for you with having these, these yeah. this great utility unit suddenly having magic bows. It's yep. awesome. Yep. And if it's too good, also, let we, us know. Yeah, we'll shooting, talk about Shooting it. Protectorate Jacks now. Yeah. yeah. With, oh, it's so oh, good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Stormfall Archers probably have the, change. the least exciting change. change note that is an incredibly <laughs> exciting change. Yeah, uh, Stormfall Archers are going to become a house guard yep. unit uh, out of their subheader. This was a this was a weird thematic like miss. Yes, because all of their text has always said that that these these like special weird artillery bows were invented by one house, but then they were accepted by lots of other houses and used mm -hmm. and integrated in their militaries. So they've always kind of thematically been house part guard. of the house guard side of the retribution. Mm -hmm. But they never gain any benefits or fit in any kind of yeah, the list thane, building. The thane didn't work on them. Yeah, and so now they're they're the house guard. They always kind of were in the rules, which is a big yeah. thing with the thane and some other stuff like that. Yeah, so the thane can just replace them, which is sweet. Or they the thane stealth. can pick them more stealth, well, which yeah, is sweet. Which is awesome. Uh, and defenders of Ios, uh, they now give you free moves, like they yeah. give you advanced yeah. moves. Yeah. yeah. Um, which we'll get into that. I guess we haven't actually talked about that yet. We'll get the theme forces are at the yeah the theme forces yeah. are coming up soon. Yeah. Uh, so that interacts with that as well. So there's a lot going on with Stormfall Archers here. Mm -hmm. uh, don't just breeze past this one. You got to think about a lot of that that's yeah. going on with this one. Uh, so Dester Thane, remember how the Desters became ballers? He's the Thane became a baller. Yep. Yeah. He's got all the same rules as they have now. Yep. We also talked about the Hushiel Artificer a little bit earlier. Mm -hmm. uh, that guy is picking a. Um, Sorry, Force Wall is changing. It is no longer an aura around himself. Mm -hmm. It is, um, you, just you pick a whole unit. Yeah. And it affects the whole unit now. Yeah. And uh, then model unit, walk. so you can do War Jackson stuff. And they can walk okay. away. Yep. Which is the key thing. Like, you don't have to stay within a range of him yeah. anymore. Yeah. Like, yeah. It you, keeps you a lot more open and makes you not have to brick up as much, which is good. Yeah. In and, my mind. and he's getting added to another thing, Force. In here. He is going right. into Legions of Dawn, yes. Yeah. Now, him so and the Magister also picked up set defense like the regular Battle Mages did, yep. and they also got range one on their... Like, when you looked at the, the giant mittens they were punching everybody in the face with, Those like, they all went to range one across fingers. the board. They have fingers, yes. Yeah. Mittens don't have fingers. Which, actually... I'm going to need you to stop that. that might hey, I thought we were talking about I'm the one in charge of the smarts around here. Anyway. Wisdom. Well, oh, and sure. also, we did tweak uh, his, his drive a little bit. Yeah, I think it got a slight wording update. I don't think it had any functionality changes. Yeah. So, cheers. So that's all the models. Yep. That is the models. Let's start going through the theme force changes because we are looking at all four theme forces. Mm -hmm. in yes. This is why it's called the Retribution CID, not the Legion yeah. of Dawn CID. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so Defenders of Ios, uh, we're going to cut Stormfall Archers from the unit composition notes because they no longer need to be listed because it allows for house guard units. They're a house guard unit. Yeah. And um, if, you, if you get some questions of that in your community, I imagine some people might get a little confused to be like, why are they losing that? Let them know. They're not. They're not. It's it not just required doesn't have to be anymore. A line anymore. Yeah. Yeah, uh, and then we talked a little bit about this with the Stormfall Archers. Uh, the benefit for Defenders of Ios is changing. Uh, it is now one model, or for every House Guard unit in the army, one Retribution unit without ranged weapons, because a lot of people are shooting in deployment zones. This got brought up at Lock and Load. Thank mm -hmm. you, Lock and Load attendees. Mm -hmm. um, and this of army can gain advance move. Before the start of the game, both players have deployed. A model with advance move can make a full advance. Yeah. Uh, so this is no longer just Halberdiers, which hopefully what that can do is it can get Rissavas in there, it can get Elevator Swordsman, yep. like it can get all these yep. other things in there. Uh, that maybe and we're not seeing play because this benefit was only for halberdiers. And this benefit so. is something we're looking at. If yes. that <laughs> is a little too lackluster, sure. then we'll, we'll adjust that. But we wanted to keep that I can move a bunch of stuff up and shoot you in your deployment zone. 
Yeah, that's not something we're, we're interested in here. Yeah, and I think this is going to be gigantic for like Risavos defenders. Like I think the Halberdiers yeah. obviously love it, but like for Risavos and from for Elowir, Siegfried just said the same thing. Oh, did, did yeah. he? Nice. Yeah, yeah like pop it up in the chat too. I yep. I think this this is a almost a, like I don't want to say a new lease on life because I think those units were great, but I think it's going to add a ton of new uh, opportunity for them like being able the, to do that. This I'm would really, be why I was dancing. Yeah, it, it's really exciting to see. And so we just want to see what people do with their battle reports. Again, uh, if you're coming in late, uh, cid.privateerpress.com is where you can go read all these rules. You can join up. You can do battle reports, and you can submit your feedback from your games directly <coughs> to us. So all the stuff we're talking about, don't just listen. Participate and let us know what you mm -hmm. think and help influence uh, changes and tweaks that occur with the data and feedback you provide. And once yep. again, that CID is running July 11th through July 30th. Thank you, John. Yep. Useful as always. Yep. Forges of War. Forges. Forges of war. So, of war. I think we should talk about Vire Jacks for a moment. <laughs> so, yeah, Hungerford mentioned earlier, <laughs> thematically, the Vire Jacks are not going into Forges of War because yes. it's the Shail. But we did test that. <laughs> yeah. It was, we uh, said, what if we make Forges of War the Warjack theme? It was a nightmare. It, it was. It was the dumbest thing we've done. It was. No. It, it, no, it wasn't it, the dumbest it, thing we've done. Close. It took like no, the a dumbest game thing we've done. Half. Was the weapon masters on uh, the fame? The, the desters on the desters. <laughs> oh, real we, fast. We test a lot of stuff. By <laughs> the Me way. and Pagani played a playtest game that we played for two turns and stopped and just immediately removed the rule. We played dester, uh, desters with weapon master on the, the, the gun, attacks, on the guns. Yeah. Literally, you can't yeah. stop them. They kill play, every caster in the game immediately. You, you, I was playing Rhett with the, the desters. What were you playing? Yeah. I don't even remember. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Like, he <laughs> moved. I moved. He looked at the table. We looked at the table. We discussed it for 30 minutes and we're just like, nope, this can never <laughs> like, happen. We don't even have to play turn two. It's fine. So, yeah, we, we, when you think, what if, what if we'd made this change? We've probably already worked that change through, if, yeah. if it's, especially on the top end. Because we do yeah. start often by saying, well, let's make these guys better and then see what happens. And then we dial it back. Because a lot of yep. our changes are, well, they're, if they're not performing where you want, we'll make them better. Yes. And then a lot of times it's like, whoa. Oh, God. <laughs> whoa. So fire jacks in here is no, it's no, not going to happen. Yeah. But let's, uh, let's talk about the changes that do occur, including... Well, you yeah, go well, well, so I do want to talk about Forge of War for just a moment. In uh, relation to the fire jacks, right? Like yeah. why it didn't work out. Yeah. Um, I mean, a lot of the jacks were fine in, in that theme force. Uh, specifically, the problem was Shield Guard and Oracular Vision. Right. With... Virus yeah. two, <laughs> yeah. Like the list became super duper durable against shooting. It absolutely crushed everything in melee, and then between shield guard and oracular vision, you could never actually kill these guys. And then of course you could have mechanics running behind them. It was a nightmare. There, there was um, little to no counterplay. Yeah, like, it, it was really hard. It, yeah, I think like Una two close levels of of bananas. Uh, so we know how much yeah. I love that. Yep, that was great. No. That was lovely. <clears throat> uh, so. Let's talk about what actually changed in, in the Forges of War. Sure. The thing yes. Was, we, we tweet, we so we didn't do a whole lot, but we kind of did everything. Earlier. Yep. So uh, basically you could take... Uh, um, Alara. Alara, thank you. You can take Alara 1 now. She got added to it. But yeah. the big change is the new benefit. It's for every 30 points of Retribution Warjacks in the army, you get to add a free Shail unit or Retribution solo. So that is free Battle Mage units for every 30 points of jacks you take. Tell it, me more. It is also the uh, Arcanist unit. Yeah, the Arcanist unit as well. well. Mm -hmm. so, so if you want to go pure, like say you're playing maybe a Helena list, you're taking on these jacks and you just want the Arcanist for free for all the empowers, mm -hmm. like yep. you can do that. If you're playing a, a different style of list where you're like, I need some of the, the like you were talking about, front line uh, rank and file infantry, you can add free Battle Mages. The, the only yeah. time I can think of we've done this is at the Cephalix theme force where you got free overlords for every mm -hmm. 30 points of drudges you got to take. Yeah. Where we were just saying specifically, you, well, where you get a unit that cost up to eight points for free is mm -hmm. overlords and Battle Mages. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. we're really interested to see how this plays out Yes. and what people are capable of doing with sure. this. Yeah, yeah. and uh, if, if you think it blows up the world, tell us. So, That's what you so think. for people who are already on my wavelength and and don't necessarily have access to those forums right this second, about how many points is the Triton gonna, Triton gonna be? Sixteen. Mm. So this right here, this is my skeptical face. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. We'll see. Yeah, we we played this internally, but like we say. <laughs> We can't play as many games as it, you guys can play. It was okay. It it is fine enough that we felt confident putting it into CID. Yes. yes. It wasn't weapon masters on Dester's guns. That didn't make it. It is at safe all. enough to test. So we it is safe enough to test. And if someone was like, "You must put this at print today," 
begrudgingly without, like, without us being like, we didn't get to test it quite enough. Okay, here you go. But like, yeah. luckily CID is going to happen. So let us know yep. if there's exploits. Tell us I, what happens. I think Jack and I need to go make some mirror match lists. Oh, yeah. So, uh, so Legions of Dawn is next. Let's move on to Legions of Dawn, which got a ton of new stuff added to it. First, yes. we mentioned Imperatus yeah. is now Imperatus in the theme force. In there. But it picked up the Ghost Sniper, the House mm -hmm. Shai'il Autificer, the Lis Healer, and the Void and the Tracer. Tracer. So, um, so these are important for a couple different reasons. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I mean, Imperatus is just a baller, so he's great. Uh, the Ghost Snipers, they're just ballers. They're great. Uh, House Shai'il Artificer can give out that Polarity Shield. No, it's not Polarity Force Barrier. Shield. I always call it wrong. Force Barrier. They yeah. can give out that Force Barrier, which is really, really great on uh, all of these things. Like yep. It's great on Desters. It's great on uh, Sentinels. Sentinels, of course, and yep. Victors. Like, everybody loves it. Your caster loves it. Your cat loves it. It's great. Um, <laughs> is there a cat in the faction? I'm there could be. Uh, with, if no, you, we're not talking about retribution anymore, Oz. It's your cat. Oh, my, I don't have a cat, yeah. sorry. Uh, well, if, if you, you had the, a cat, they would like it. If okay. you take the little trencher bro that has the cat model, you can add cats to all your your, legions, or your retribution people. They can't take that model. The, you the, buy the, it. the cat bit. Oh, you sure, yeah, yeah, buy yeah. It. You can Fair enough. cover Fair enough. imperatives with cats. Uh, and then the list healer gets added, which is huge for a couple reasons. One, uh, vengeance people don't like to get knocked down. Nope. Mm -hmm. So, they hate it. cheers. Uh, two... It stops your Jack Marshall Jacks from getting knocked down, which is one of the bigger complaints that we've seen about this theme force is that those uh, Jack Marshall Jacks get knocked down, they can't shake because they're Jack Marshalled, and then this mm -hmm. becomes a problem. So that is like one of those really great uh, combinations with the list healer specifically in this theme force. Yep. yep. Uh, and then the Void Tracer, uh, sure, like he's great. He does stuff. <laughs> um, I think it's a it's, Sure. <laughs> Void Tracers are great. They do stuff. Um, and I think if you want magic defense, you can either take your Solus Escort or you can take this Void Tracer, depending yeah. on kind of what route you're going here. I just like yeah. the way you started that one. You're like, Void Tracers, sure, sure, they're great. Yep. It's just a it's, little it's kind of like Imperatus and Ghost Sniper, right? Like, yeah. oh, they're just dope models. Yeah. They yeah. do stuff. So. It's a little bit more there support for that army. <laughs> yep. There's no like particular interaction I want to call yeah. out with that guy, whereas I think the Artificer and the Liz Healer have uh, and, very choice. And we're, we're also tweaking so. that army building benefit. Yes. Just like we did for Forge of the War. Um, and also, they're great solos for Steamroller. Like, both the, the Void Tracer mm -hmm. and, the, and the Sniper that you just mentioned. Like, the Sniper can hang back if you have to run up on a flag mm -hmm. later in the game. He's a great mm -hmm. scoring uh, one. So is the Void Tracer. You can kind of keep it back, or it can be the early one you throw up on the flag just to say, like, hey, you have to come yep. contest or deal with me. They're not terribly options. expensive. So yep. you're not, you know, for scenario play, I think they're two very important mm -hmm. solos to have in your theme force. Yep, uh, and then what's going on with their theme benefit here for free models is we're letting you take, uh, I think it's any type of solo, not just Dawn Guard solos, yeah. and then you can also take uh, small or medium base ones. So you can take that Artificer for free mm -hmm. if you want, yep. which is a big one. Yeah, which is a big really, 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 really big one. Um, Shazza Retribution, mm -hmm. they the had last guy right here. two models added. Uh, yeah. Moros, because again, makes sense that he'd be in Shadows of Retribution, and yep. Moros is dope, and we want to see people playing with Moros, and for very much the same reasons of it just being a great model, the list healer got added yeah. in it as yes. well. Uh, yep. And uh, the other change was for every 20 points of retribution units, you get a, uh, a free solo or a command well, attack. Yeah, so, so you I'm did gonna, used to I'm be able to take. I'm you just real fast. So yes, sure. list healer. In Shadows as well. Yeah. Yes. Go ahead. God, John is so happy back there. It's like Christmas. So happy. Don't bump the uh, button when you're doing all that dancing. <laughs> I don't want to have like somebody's mic just suddenly cut out or the entire feed be destroyed because uh, John's butt hit something. Oh, jeez. <laughs> Uh, so with the big change here for Shadows of Retribution in terms of its benefit is you can now take unit detachments for free. So you can get that ARS-3, you can yes. get your Strike Force Commanders, that kind of stuff, yep. uh, which yep. is the big one. Yep. So. All right, so that's, that's all the changes. What's we, happening? We've got a couple minutes before we're going to wind the stream down. So what we're going to do is let you all talk to us for a little bit, and we'll, we'll answer a couple, uh, we will answer a couple questions. Yeah. While you're all chatting your questions, before we get to them, I want to remind everybody that the current mini crate is coming to uh, an end in terms of being able to get that model in, I believe, eight days. Uh, it is the Gaston Crossbones uh, Sweet Pirate Gaston model. Mm -hmm. This looks Yarr. amazing. You got two so, stabby sticks. Yeah. Those aren't sticks. Uh, you can either get him by himself, or you can get a subscription to Mini Crate and, and get all kinds of, of dope stuff. John just brought up, you know, the August Mini. There you see, Gaston Crossbone, July nineteenth. So we've got eight days left. Uh, mini dash crate dot com is where you can go to pick him up if you are interested. Um, I like pirates. You like pirates. Everyone likes pirates. Get dope models. That's all there is to that. Paint them. Yeah, paint, paint them with Oz. Paint them with Oz. But he's way less paint, grumpy in real life. Paint. What? What? I'm confused. All right, so let's get to a couple <laughs> questions. Shall uh, we go? I want to hit up one that just went off the top from Anna Panama, which yeah. is a great name, by the way, uh, which is, what if the Gorgon got a spray six and lost the uh, speed debuff? I don't know. Play some games with the Gorgon. Tell me how it's not working out, and maybe that's the answer. 
Uh, Tell me why that's here. Although, although suggesting drastically crazy changes, like what if this model can now fly and has sure. Its well, that's obviously not fist or whatever. Right. Yeah, you got to stay on concept. Be be careful with that because yeah, yeah the, the concept of the model mm -hmm. is the kind of rules we're going to give it. And, um, and I think uh, sort of what to learn from from that comment there is is the what if blank gets blank uh, is not a question that we're going to answer because yeah. there's nothing backing that up, right? So play a gorgon. Uh, Figure out what it's not doing well. Share your battle report. Share your battle report with what it's not doing. And then say, I think the Gorgon should get Spray 6, and here's why I think that mm -hmm. it should get Spray 6. Yeah. So don't just ask the question. Give us uh, what it's not doing, what you want it to do, and why your change is the one that we should make. Data. Uh, a couple that came by, uh, I saw Saber and a couple other people ask about the Tharn CID. We're really focused in on this one right now, but the Tharn CID is, is next, so you'll be getting all your sweet Tharn stuff soon. And she asked if she'll be seeing a lot of us at War Machine Weekend. I know that I I'll be- I would imagine everyone I'll, will be, I'll be at War Machine Weekend, Who so. Knows? Hopefully. But for those of you asking about Tharn stuff right now, uh, wait. It's coming very, yeah. very soon. Yeah. Uh, another question that came up uh, that I don't know if we can answer yet, but I'm gonna throw it out to us. Sure. Somebody, uh, I think it was Grinaldi, said, uh, when is the exemplar CID changes going live? Do we have an sure. estimate of when that's it's happening? Soon. Uh, yeah, it's soon. Yeah, I would imagine in the next couple of weeks. Yeah. Very so soon. lock and load uh, happens, and that causes people to generally take vacations after lock and load because <laughs> lock and load is a lot of work yes. building and then we have up. to go right to Gen Con. And then, and then the 4th of July week was weird because the holiday was in the middle of it. So it's, it's, it's in the process. It's very, very close, but we can't give you a specific date because we're going to probably not hit that specific date, if I promise. Uh, Correct. Woozle Woozle asks, is the Trident in Legions of Dawn only? Uh, I believe it's also in Defenders because that one says Retribution. Yeah. There's one of them that says uh, Battle Engines. Anything that says sure Battle Engines counts the Trident. Yeah. Uh, Mascado84 says, Ron and free mages in forges. Is that something you took into account during your testing? Yeah. I, mean, I personally yeah, tested that list several times. Yeah. Yes. It's yeah, good. Yeah. <laughs> it's very good. We had another similar question from uh, Striker911 about our intent with the, uh, the archers, the Stormfall archers. Yeah. Our intent is to make them house guard so that they have more interactions. Correct, yes. Like, and they give more benefits. Honestly, I think Stormfalls are functioning very, very well. And I think the added benefits uh, yeah. for taking them because of the Thane and things like that probably gets them there. So in my opinion, they're fine. Like, I, I'm very happy with where they're at right now. Uh, Sky Mall Rat says, Alara 1 was talking about being included in Forges. Is that still on the table? Uh, she currently it, is in Forges. Uh, it yeah. said battle, Solos with Battlegroup Command Controller? Yeah, yeah Controller. Yeah. We, so you can take Alara 1. We've, yes. So As yes. we've been going through a lot of that these, is still we've widened the language. <laughs> to be more inclusive when we originally intended it to be multiple kinds of models, but when the theme force came out, those other models didn't exist or yeah. whatever. And so yeah, that kind of language is there to cover anybody who possibly fits in that bucket. Here's a good question for everybody. 10 Minute Pie says, conceptually, is there a hard limit on the number of free points you feel a theme force should be able to get? Because 24 from three units of mages in the new Shiel one seems like a lot. Uh, I think it really depends, and this is my answer, but y'all feel free to say whatever you want, is how, how many, what those points are. Yeah. For example, if there was a protectorate theme force that said, you got 90 feet free points of racks, I don't know that I would necessarily be offended. Because, oh, I, I would be offended. Yeah, but like... I, you, you would go insane gluing all those little things onto them. Yeah, but it, like if my opponent decided to fill their entire deployment zone in AD with just racks everywhere that I could then like eventually blow up and create this chain amazing reaction. chain reaction, you have your 93 yeah. points of racks. Yeah. So there's no hard, fast answer. It depends on what it is. And, and for the battle mages, it is a lot of free points of battle mages, but we're also looking at what those three units of battle mages do, yeah. and if it's too much. That's, that's yeah, what I and those kind of comments are also why you often see base size mentioned in the free models you can take, because we might not want the solo on a horse or a cat or a whatever to be included free because maybe their points are okay, but their functionality for free is not what we like, and sure. those kind of things. Yep. So yeah, we, we look at every theme force as its own thing when we're trying to decide. I mean, we do kind of have a rule of, we're not gonna give you 60 free points unless it's something I, crazy. I think it very heavily depends on what you're getting for the free points. That's, that's not saying. necessarily yeah. the number yeah, yeah. of free points. Yeah, right? that's, all, yeah. that's all what you're actually bringing. So. Uh, any other questions um, you guys want to hit? So Tyrannius asks, was Dauntless Resolve tested on Sentinels? Uh, that seems to be a big power swing to them. Uh, yes. Yeah, we, we test a lot. Mm -hmm. Like we play, we play lot. test uh, mm -hmm. four to five times a week. Uh, not necessarily on a war machine, but all that kind of stuff, right? Yeah, like, between so like RideQuest, MomPoc, yeah. and this, it's so much. So, uh, yeah. yes, and we have been testing these changes for months at this point. Yeah. So, uh, 
Yes, we test, I'm not going to say we test every interaction, because obviously we don't, but we test a vast majority of them, uh, especially ones that we think are problematic and like get a little asterisk next to them, like Sentinels can get really, really high armor. Yep. Yes, mm -hmm. that is all things that we that we check out. So, uh, do you all see any other pressing ones you're going to hit, or we're going to go ahead and wrap this up? So we did, um, Eddie Johnson. We did talk early at the beginning of this about telekinetic wave, and yes, it's it's meant to be triggered more than once and timing and all that stuff. And we are going to look at the language of that entire package, the all three of those abilities, and make them clearer. Um, but yeah, right now the intent is you can do it multiple times. You can do it out of out of whatever yep. whenever. It just has to happen in a certain process because of the way that rules written right now. But we're gonna we're gonna look at all that. Okay. All right. Go answer that one. It takes the, to read. Pagani's got his real he's laser focused. <laughs> it's, in. it's the like the tiny Facebook chat text. Uh, a lot of people are pointing out the benefit of the Lissular in relation to protecting Shade Forest feet. Is it true you are considering making Marlin a mercenary ally? Making no. her a Marlin mercenary ally. Get, get out of here. Why See, don't you even said, read the Florida guys? Said, if it's <laughs> if it's if it's a really long <laughs> one. <laughs> Then, yeah. All right. I so love I love you, Florida guys. Anyway, thanks everybody for watching. We're going to go ahead and wrap this up. For those of you who want to participate, please go off to the CID.privateerpress.com, mm -hmm. read all these rules in full, and start getting some battle reports in. Let us know what you think. And don't forget to join us three days a week, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, always at 10 a.m. Pacific. Tuesday for weekly Rumble, where for next week and the week after, we'll be playing more Monster Apocalypse. I'm sure Oz will be one of the Dallas opponents. and I are playing next week, unless something goes weird. And Sweet. we're playing with one monster and a full 15-unit yep. army. Sweet. So, so we're a, playing, a normal one monster we're, game. We're playing a normal one monster game, as opposed to the starter boxes that Shik and I played yesterday. And then the week after that is Shik and I again with some other things. And eventually, when I get my Martians, I'm going to jump in and Stop. I want to throw down on you. Uh, Wednesdays is what you just watched, Dev Hangout. We talk about CIDs. Get ready for the next few Dev Hangouts to be us talking about the retribution CID cycles and the updates we're making. So that, you know, that'll be our topic of conversation for a little bit yep. here. And Thursdays, Dallas, get your paint on. Get your paint on. Watch Dallas paint, te teach you uh, tips and tricks on the hobby. And, yeah. uh, you know, always come join us, twitch.tv slash privateerpress, or watch us later on at youtube.com slash privateerpressprime. And one last reminder, you have eight days left for your Gaston Crossbones mini crate model mm -hmm. at mini dash crate.com so please uh, yeah. <laughs> go check that out uh, and so we will see you all shortly on the CID forums goodbye mm -hmm. everybody Pagani Brandon said that you don't have to read his comments ever again power yeah. well, wisdom <laughs>